And welcome back to the program. So we've been discussing the recent issues in the Ganawage education system. And of course, uh, we do have two chiefs from the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. If you're just tuning in, you're catching us at the end of the show, which will restart in a little while. But um, we've been discussing some of the ongoing issues, the suspension of the Ganawage Combined School Committee, um, the appointment of the Interim Board of Trustees, how the Mohawk Council arrived at these recent decisions, all of the documents, the fact sheets, the, the letters of complaints, um, how it came to be that the Mohawk Council had made their decision. Now, fast forward through the rest of the last 30 minutes. Where we are now, you said that the Interim Board of Trustees will be discussing governance, the Constitution. They do have a mandate that they're working towards, regardless of where people stand at this point. They're continuing on in their job. Where do the two of you, I guess, representing Mohawk Council, see this going at this point, and what would be the ultimate resolve to this situation? Well. I'll tell you that last night I was very hopeful in spite of all of the uh, revelation of differences of opinion and belief. And you're talking about the community meeting that right. happened the, on the parties. Tuesday evening. Yes, okay. yeah. that okay. was last night, Tuesday. Yeah. And in there, finally, I heard off offers of approach in a sense arbitration, mediation, mm -hmm. those kind of words, kinds of words came out. And uh, Rena as well spoke those words, and Deidre and uh, Marie spoke those. And so it almost seemed to be that there was some mending that was, or approaches given that would lead to mending the situation. There's a lot of work to yeah. be done. You know, a review of education is probably what's needed now. Mm -hmm. Really, total, in terms of standards, in terms of everything that's happening in all the schools. Maybe it's time for each school to be reviewing its standards and its vision and its direction. I think mm -hmm. that's the best thing that can come out of it. But it'll be in parts, you know. This is what the schools should be doing. This is what the committee should be doing. And I just wanted to correct, you know, it was a suspension of the powers, the powers. of the KCSC. Okay. It's still a, a, a committee. Mm -hmm. It's just that for the interim, step back and let, let's get this work done and then the coming together of the two groups. Have oh. you guys seen, oh, sorry, did uh, you I'll want just to? Just to add to that, like, I know like everybody thinks of, uh, we took everything away from them. There's nothing that says, in three months from now, when everything is cleared up, the body that was in place before could still be in place within three months again. Mm -hmm. The same people. Right. So, you know, we're not taking or taking any away from anybody. You know, I just want that to be clear because these people that are not involved right now still could be involved in three months from now mm -hmm. and resume their positions. Right. With a renewed process that ensures that everyone, all the people have a voice, not just the kind of meetings that have happened in the past where you get, it's almost like gangs, mm -hmm. and who has the, you know, might makes right? I don't think so. Not when it concerns our kids. Right. You know, there has to be a voice for every parent. And the very issue of who is a parent or a guardian. I live in a house where my grandchildren live, and I feel, just as involved in their education as the mother and the father of those kids. I think and, was... my, and my former husband, Joe, as well, lives in a house with his grandsons and his daughter. Mm -hmm. And he's involved as well right. with the education of his grandchildren. So I want to have a voice in this. And other people, um, post-secondary students, Mm -hmm. They're adults. They're yeah, they're mean, involved. You know, you they know, should have a voice yes, as well. And th these issues have come up. You're correct. There was a meeting that had a, occurred um, a several months back where people were given different types of paper and told to sit over here if you didn't have if you currently didn't have children attending mm -hmm. school right now. And some people felt very offended by that because mm -hmm. they felt, well, I have grandchildren or I'm a community member who has a stake in this. And, you know, so some people did feel that it didn't address everybody. See, that's like one of the issues that's been brought up is like, 
<clears throat> I know everybody was separated, saying her mother, father, only one vote. If you didn't work for the, if you work for the school, you only could vote. I, for me personally, I think that's that's not right because we're a native community, and a lot of our children are brought up by either grandparents, uncles, aunts, close fat, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm, yeah. I think those people that are raising our children should also have the vote. And I don't think it should be one vote per family because what if the mom and dad are separated, you know? Mm -hmm. He might have one difference in opinion and the mother might have one. And they're both not living in the same house. So why are you gonna take a vote away from one and not the other? Well, you know, I think that sometimes there, there, maybe there's a risk of um, conflict, conflict mm -hmm. of interest. I mm -hmm. mean, if you look at uh, right now, Moa Council, of course, your uh, one of your chiefs, Kasanahoe Sky Deer, is being accused of that. You know, and uh, heavily accused. Well, your father works in Agri Nuha, and now he's on this mm -hmm. committee, and and now she's, you know one of the chiefs who helped prepare this and how come if there's so much conflict that she's not removed and I mean these are things that that do make people question the integrity of the Moha Council. I mean do you uh, see that? We see that because okay. you also see that it, it, we're, again we're a native community. Mm -hmm. We're all related. We got aunts, we got uncles, we got cousins, we got nieces. We're all related in every which way to the school committee, to the to the education directors, to teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't say we're in conflict when we're related anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's I find that- It's kind of hard to remove the conflict. I mean, maybe something that was just really specific, <clears throat> like the thing family is, this members was a, in conflict that, like that. You and know, this was close. a hard decision to make. It wasn't a decision that was like made easily mm -hmm. because you know, you have, I have many friends on the combined school committee, close friends. We grew up together. I got friends on the trustees. We we all have friends and family that are involved in this, right. and one way or the other, it's like we know this is going to be the toughest decision you're going to make, because we're going to we know we're going to offend people, but unfortunately, if everybody respects one another, it's our opinions. It's a decision that we've got to make, but we're making it in the best interest of our community. Okay. I know we have to wrap this up, but there's something that I've been been really wanting to can know. I Can I just throw in one last yes, comment? Yes, sure. Yep. You know, the danger is, because we're going to Wagga, we always want a common enemy. We can't, we don't have a common enemy right now, so we got to focus on ourselves. And it almost seems as though whenever we have an issue, we got to go at each other. And quite frankly, we forget that really education, the subject is for the betterment of the children of the community. Mm -hmm. It's to make education better, better, exactly. not worse. It's not supposed to tear a whole community apart. Well, and this is what I was just about to ask you both was, have you seen this go into the schools now at this point? Is this an issue mm -hmm. affecting the children mm -hmm. at this point? Yes. Because I understand there are little situations now developing. Well, from the start of this morning and from yesterday, <clears throat> we've been getting information from concern and the students of survival school that they're into a student council and they've pretty much been rebellious against the administration, that they're going to hold their council and they're not going to listen to the principal. And that's going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. I understand <clears throat> that. Yeah. We're having phone calls from parents that they've picked up their children that they removed them from the school as of today because their, their kids are being bullied, you know, they're being pushed around, whatever it may be. There's kids that are leaving the school. There's teachers that are sitting in their classrooms empty with no students to teach. So like, um, you know, I think it's falling apart at the school right now. Mm -hmm. And really, I have nephews and nieces in the school. I think their education is needed and not to be discussing this political issue. Right. I think something has to be done immediately and stepped in and brought back some type of discipline or put them back in, let's get back to school. Mm -hmm. Did you, and I know we have to wrap this up, but I have to ask, do you feel at all responsible for part of this situation? Did you see when making this decision that, or even any of the combined school committee 
you know, together, because we are all responsible at the end of the day. But this would be an outcome. This would create divisions in this community. Yeah. And did you foresee anything when you were thinking well, that we have to make I this decision? Well, I think what the, the students are being falsely given some false information because this is what this, the student council is talking about and is being relayed to us from our family members in that school. It's saying that MCK is trying to take our language away. They're trying to take our culture away. They're trying to assimilate us. They're trying to, do, and we're not anywhere near there to do that. They're missing, it's like the whole point is being misguided and misinterpreted. And we're, you know, I think the students got to remove themselves from being political and start being about the education or if they're having their student councils, talk about the bullying, talk about whatever it may be concerning the school system. Okay. Christine? Yes, and I was just concerned that, okay, the only last comment I had to make was while we're in this process of attempting to straighten out the problems that we've read and heard and seen, we've got to ensure that students are not being told to be rebellious because it's like a use of children. If kids are at high school, I, I think it's an excellent situation where there are student councils. I mean, that's a real uh, activity that stimulates your political knowledge. Right. But in this situation, someone is doing the directing and that I don't think is appropriate. People have to be able to make up their own minds and sometimes it's difficult to do when you're 15 mm -hmm. or 16. Okay. Well, no doubt um, you both obviously have the best intentions for this issue to some degree to resolve. Uh, it's not going to resolve itself. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be a long process. I think in the community we can all agree that it doesn't seem like it's finished at this point. Mm -hmm but hopefully uh, in the near future, there will be some resolve. Thank you both for coming on and answering some questions. I appreciate your time. And of course, I appreciate the community for tuning in and watching Moab TV's Channel 4. It's a very serious issue. We hope that you enjoyed the program today. We're going to be continuing to follow this story as it develops over the next couple of weeks. If you have any comments or questions regarding today's program, please give us a call here at 632-6397 and leave us your comments on our newsline or send us an email at mohawktv at hotmail.com. Until then, I'm Regan Jacobs signing off for Our Town. Wanna? Kanyak ke haga thadi adrast kayerniga hiadu zewade roru.